All right, so we're going to continue where we left off, but before we start, um, all right, it's going to be some students joining because I'm just hosting their class for today because the teacher is not here. But just let me know when you see them joining so I can just tell them their instructions. But let's start. Who is not here? Huh? Who is not here? No, no, no. no. Not here. There's going to be a class joining us because their teacher is not here. But when you see that, when you see those students, just let me know. So I can just give them their work, like, because I have their work. Sorry, work, work. Repeat. So this is C-3, S-4, S-8. It's S-4, right, S-4. All right, but, yes, S-4, it's S-4. So we're going to go into today, All right? If you can recall, in the previous class, we were on ratios, right? And we introduced the topic. So we're going to go back to page 112, right? And now... Book two, in the volume one, let me just quickly check what page it will be. Huh? For the volume one, um, I'm not sure exactly what page it is, because remember, the volume one is a pre preface to the volume two. So that's why really I focus on the volume two, because that is the one that's recommended on, on the book list. But um, I'll try my best to just get... Uh, some pages scanned, but just follow along with me though for today. Okay, let me go here. All right, excellent. So here we go. So it says, we're going to review what we did last class by looking at this question. $435 is to be shared amongst three friends, right? You have their names, Shiva, Bernadette, and Derek in the ratio five to two. Right, so let's, let's attempt the question. Ratio, right? So, first question. Who would get what ratio based on the question? All right? Let's start off with Shiva. Let's start off with Shiva. So, Shiva would get what ratio? Here we go. Five. Five. Okay, good. Bernadette would get Bernadette is eight. Eight, excellent. And the last one, Derek is, Derek is gonna be two. All right, good. My bad. There we go. Two. All right, let's quickly attempt this. So now, what I want you to do now, firstly, add up all the ratios to find the total ratio. The total ratio equal to how much? 15. 15, correct. The next thing now, find one share of $435. What would you do? Divide. 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 Um, how much does Shiva get now? So what would you do? So Shiva share is going to be equal to? Times 29 by the 5, yeah. All right, 29 times 5. What would be Bernadette's share? 145. Right, so you say 8 times. 29 times 8, sir. Right. And now <clears throat> Derek's share is going to be equal to? 29 times 2. Excellent. Good. So that's really just a, a, a brief recap. Let me just calculate it real quick. There we go. 29 times 5. My bad. Correct. There we go. All right. Now we have calculate 29 times 8. That's 232, that's correct. And last 58, one, sir. how much? 58. 58, excellent. Okay, good. Yeah, so good so I'm, I'm glad now, because I feel like everyone understands it now. So we can we should be able to move on now. So let's close up everything. Now we're going to move on into method two. Right? <clears throat> right? Method two is essentially, what if now you forget the steps that were done here? You'll use method two. Well, let me just pause for a second. All right, and for I don't see any senior for students. You should 
Should be some students joining us today, but I don't see them. They're not in the, not in the, wait, not in the class, sir. All right. Sir, check the waiting room. <clears throat> Let me check the waiting room. It's, it's disabled. But just don't be on the safe side. When you see them joining, just resend this link for them. Just resend the link so they can see it. What, what link, sir? It's in the Zoom chat. So when they join, just put that link again. Just copy the link and paste it again when you see them joining. Like this. There you go. All right. <clears throat> Let's continue. So now we're going to move on to method two. What if now you forgot the steps that we discussed a while ago? We're going to go into method two. So what method two says is that you really focus on worded statements. So you don't just list the names. You write statements. So you would say the sum of money to be shared. Right? And you could change this to whatever the question asks. What if it was money? What, what, what if it was saying the sum of coins or the sum of marbles, right? You change it interchangeably to what the question asks you. But you just write worded statements. They say, first thing, the sum of money to be shared, <clears throat> that will be equal to $445. The next statement, find the total amount of equal parts right and we said that was five plus eight plus two which was 15 excellent now the next statement now would be you using fractions so using fractions to find the shares right and this is where the questions come in now right so before before anybody um answers i want you to raise your hand and tell me Express Shiva's share as a fraction. All right, let me check. First person to raise your hand. Jazil, excellent. Shiva was the first one right there. Yeah, the first one. And she was five, five over 15. Five divided by 15. She right. would be uh, one over three. 1 over 3, okay. 1 divided by 3. But here's the interesting no thing now. I, I want to see if you remember, because we discussed it early in October, right? If I have a fraction, what am I trying to find a fraction of? In other words, if I have a third, what am I putting the third to, to get Shiva's share? Uh, the, the, yeah. can go as Excellent. So let me write um, off 435. Let me put <clears throat> Jazil's name and Athura's name. Jazil. Good job, guys. Good job. So now all we would have to do is just multiply these numbers as if we had them originally as fractions. Yeah, the answer would be 20. Sorry, sorry about that, sir. That's no. why I put up my answer, and the answer is 20. All right, thank you, thank you. But let me just show them. So we'd have a third multiplied by 435, my bad, 435 divided by one, all right? So all we need to do now is to multiply across. I'm sorry about that, so I made a mistake when I calculated. In the answer, I'm not sure if Right, but here's the thing though. Can this be simplified firstly? Can I say, yes, sir, all right, so how many times can you go into 435? 145. So, okay, so you can say 3 into 3 goes 1, 300, 3 into 435 goes 145. All right, so that means... We, right, <laughs> so that means we don't have any denominators, so the only thing we have left is 145 times 1, which is the same thing as just... One hundred and forty-five dollars. Excellent. Good. Anyone doesn't understand? <clears throat> All right. Let's go to Bernadette quickly. Let's go. Just let's go to Bernadette Express. Bernadette. So we don't have to write out the exact steps since we did it already for for Shiva. We're just gonna quickly go through. It. All right. So Express Bernadette now as a fraction for me. Let me see, let me see the hands. 
But you should be able to answer quickly. All right, Khalil, quickly, as a fraction. Yes. What's yes, the fraction? Sir. 8 out of 15. 8 divided by 15. And then now, um, Derek's. Derek. 2 out of 15. 2 out of 15. And all you would have to do is say off 435 and off 435. And the off means multiplication. Right, and that would give okay. you your answers for both of them. Excellent. So that's method two. So if you don't remember how to work this example where you just find one share, right? So now we're gonna say what is the difference between method one and method two? Right, so what is the difference between method one and method two? Right? This one now I want someone to attempt it that hasn't answered a question before. Let's see, Harry. <clears throat> right? Are you there, Harry? There it is. Are you there? Uh, yes, sir. All right, good. Follow with me now. All right. If you can recall, method one was where we found individually something. But explain to me what do you think method one was again? So let me put Harry's name, Harry Chan, all right? And yes, so what's method one? Wait, sir, what do you mean by All right, just tell me what you understand about method one. What do we do generally? So when we had Shiva as five, Bernadette as eight, Derek as, as two, what do we do with those numbers? Uh, we added them. Method one, we add the amount of shares, right? What was the next step? Uh, and then we, we divided. We divided. Uh-huh. And then we multiplied. But what do we divide, though? We divided the, like, the shares. The shares. Uh -huh. So we say the total amount of um, shares. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we divide the total amount of shares. So we could say total amount of shares, right? But what was this value? The total um, that was given, right? So we could say the value. The value, so we divide the value by the total amount of shares. And then now, what was the next step? The final step? Uh, we multiplied. We multiplied, yeah? To find individually the person's share, right? Yes. Right? To find individually person's share value. All right, thank you, Harry. I appreciate it. All right, let's go to the method two now. I mean... So that was method one. Let's hear from Kimani. All right. What is method two now? What do you recall from method two? Yes, sir. Yeah. So just run me through the steps. So I'm going to show you method two again. And tell me now what were the steps that we did. So if you look back on it, what was the big difference between method one and method two? Method two, we used something different. What was it? Right, so uh, where we said we express the amount of share that person has on above something, right? So we use that. Are you there? All right, let me help you a little bit. So for the second method, we used fractions to find the share of that person. So we said, for example, what value would go in the numerator, Kimani? The value in the numerator would be Are you there, Kimani? I don't hear you. Yes, so, okay, I hear you now. All right, so what are you saying? So the value in the numerator would be 
that person's individual share, correct? Yes, sir. Right? And tell me what the value in the denominator would be. The value in the denominator mm -hmm. would be, let's do it back on our example. We had, um, now let's go to a better example. Let's go here. We had 15. What was this 15? You remember? We said it was the sum of something. You got to help me out here. The sum of... All right. It would be the sum of the total amount of shares between the persons. Correct? All right. All right. So that's the difference, guys. That's the difference. All right. One of them you express as a fraction, and one of them you just find the one share and multiply by the amount that person has. Good, good. So now we can move on now. So we're going to go into something called rate. All right, let's put this here. So that's the next topic. We're going to go into rate. What is rate? We're not talking about water rate. It's in the volume two. It's in the volume two, but again, I think... um. The volume to the ascent is, I think, was the wrong one because it, it numbered the pages differently. So I'll have to um, just send you some screenshots of this book after class. So just remind me in the group for me. I'll, I'll take some pictures for you. But we're going to go into rate, right? When you get, like, your, um, your parents get their water rate at the end of the month, what does that mean? Uh, it's their water bill. Right? So how much water they use over a given amount of time, correct? Yes, sir. Right. So what are, what rate means is that you're comparing two things per the request of another. So if you're comparing water, it has to be with regards to either time, money, or something. So it's two values being compared, right? So let's write that. A rate is a comparison by division between two different quantities it shows it shows it's important because here's what happened if you don't know the rate at which your heart is beating khalil are you alive well you are alive but no. If your heart doesn't beat at a constant rate, Khalil, are you are you a healthy person? No, sir. Right. So your heart has to have some proper or constant rate, and that describes how healthy you are. Because if an obese person, their heart rate would be quicker, right? But a healthy person would be more constant and um, paceful. So that's why rate is important. It observes everything, because you're speaking at a rate as well. You're speaking X amount of words per minute. We call that words per minute, right? You're, I'm typing at a specific yeah. amount of words per minute. Yeah? Sir, I cannot find it in the body once. Yes, sir. Can you send me a some, some screenshot of the pages, sir? No problem. No problem. So, matter of fact, let me just set a timer so I will remember. I'll set a timer for 45 minutes from now. Wait. One hour from now, because I have a class after. And then now, when it hits, I'll know to just... No, 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 I have a class back-to-back, -back, so I have to just put it in advance. But as soon as time is over, I will know to just send some screenshots for you, so not to worry, right? But let's continue. So we're saying now that the rate shows how one quantity, right, changes with respect to another, right? <clears throat> If your heart is beating at X amount of um, pumps per minute, that's your heart rate, heart beats, all right? Okay, so we're, that, that's what we're on now. We're learning how to calculate those types of things. So you could even say we're predicting things, right? We're looking in the, in the future and determining what that value would be at that time, all right? So let's do an example first about oranges. Let's say you went to the store and you want to buy some fruits because it's COVID, you want to be healthy, the manager tells you that the fruits cost X amount of money per orange, right? That would be, for example, let 
us say that we have a manager telling us that oranges that it costs ten dollars for eight oranges right wait my bad let me remove this but what if we only wanted one orange guys for there we go there we go right so it costs 10 for eight right so that's a rate so if you buy eight orange it costs ten dollars should probably write this better one moment so let me write it cost ten dollars for eight oranges all right does, does that make sense so if you buy eight you get it's it's charged to be ten dollars but what if we only wanted one orange right we would need to find the rate exactly so what we'll do here's what, here's what we'll say let's go here so we're gonna say the cost per orange the word per is very important because it means for every or for one orange right is as such right 10 divided by 8 equals 10 divided by 8 is infinite 10 divided by 8 is a terminating decimal <laughs> that you remember that i'm actually i'm glad that you guys remember the terms recurring terminating all right, so you, that means you've been revising. Good. But, so you told but, us that's like about two weeks ago. Exactly. I'm glad you remember. But here's the thing, Khalil. We're dealing with money, right? So you can't have infinite money. So yes, you might have cents, C-E-N-T-S, at the end of the money. So you'd probably have one point something. But because it's, it's dollars, it's not infinite. So you would have to say you have 25 cents. You wouldn't just continue and say you have 25 nine 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 seven six five six seven 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 cents that's not how you do it you have to just say for example you have cents to the hundredth power to the hundredth position rather so let's hear what we will have now so if we have 10 divided by eight let's quickly calculate that 10 divided by eight no no it's 1.25 1. 1. because here's why I just thought the 10 will be the divide and, and the dividend, sir. Let me draw it to show you. One second. Look at this. I, I, thought, I thought that 10 was the divider and it is the dividend, sir. No. It's having the 10 here and then the 8 on the outside dividing it right here. So you say 8 into 10 goes one time because I have... I have no space after right here. And then now you worry about the decimal part of it. Because you know it goes one time. So the answer that we just got is 1.25. Everybody agree? Yes, sir. So in other words, that 1.25 now represents how much it costs for one orange. Right, let's do some harder questions. What if now we have... Um, a male, what is something? A male, let me put it up here. All right, here we go. Good. A male heart pulse beats 360 times. I mean, what? Pulse, my bad. Pulse. So his pulse, heartbeat, right? 360 times. In uh, yeah, a male's pulse. My bad. Thank you, Khalil. A male's pulse. All right. So a pulse. Wait, wait. After you answer, I, I hear you. You know, like when your heart's beating, Khalil. The pulse is when you can feel it. Like, your right. feeling of it beating. So you can go at your neck here, and you'll feel a twitch in your neck. Playing that your heart is beating, so or you can. Sometimes I feel that my wrist. Exactly, I was going to say. So you can go on your wrist as well, and if you do it properly, you can feel like your your nerves twitching. That's called a pulse, right? So when the persons are um drowning or whatever, you typically check for their pulse, and that will tell you if they're still breathing or their heart is beating or not. All right? So you can say now a male's pulse beats. My bad, beats 
360 times in five minutes when he is at rest. What is the normal pulse rate, i.e. the number of beats per minute? All right. Now I want someone now, raise their hands, raise their hands, and now take me through the steps. Let's see the hands. Let me check the hands. All right. First hand gets three points, actually. Pale. We have to, we have to do this question. Yeah, so we're going to do the question together, but Pale raised her hand first, so we're just going to follow her steps. All right, Pale, you have the floor. What's the first thing you want me to write down for you? We're going to divide 5 into 360. All right, so divide. Let me write the name first. Pale. There we go. So we're going to divide 5 into 360. All right. So let me just do that for you. Calculate. 360 divided by 5. And that gives me 72. What should I do with this 72? So you, That's per minute, like 72 pulse. Exactly. Per so you'd say 72 pulse per minute. So, yes, it's good to write your answer, but if you don't tell me what that value is, for example, I wouldn't know what you're calculating. So, when she said pulse per minute, now I know that, hey, she's talking about heartbeat, right? So, that's correct. Good job. Let's do another question now. All right. This question says, the deep sea, and I think you guys will like this one. It says, the deep sea, let me go here. All right, good. The deep sea clam, you know, SpongeBob, the, the pearl in the clam's mouth. This is, we're doing a question like that. So the deep sea clam takes, takes, 100 years to reach a length of 8 millimeters. How many years does it take to reach 1 millimeter? Right? Raise your hands. Payal is out now because she hands with one. Want to see someone else's hands? No, virtually. Raise your hands virtually. I, I saw Ludi's hands first, though. I'm not going to lie. I saw Ludi's hands first. All right, Ludi, you have the floor. All right, take me through the steps. So let me put your name. Uh, so me? Yeah. Oh, uh, you divide uh, eight into uh, 100. Eight into 100. But what is eight and what is 100? You have to tell me the units. So what is eight? Eight what? Eight meters. Right into what? One hundred years. Years. Okay. What is so? Let's calculate it. One hundred divided by eight would give me twelve point five. Now, what does this value represent? Uh, that's how many years it would take. Uh, uh huh. To it takes to reach one millimeter. Excellent. Good job. So it takes 12.5 years for the clam to reach one millimeter. So I, I'm getting you guys get the gist. So we can now quickly move on to the next topic, right? Next topic is proportions and direct proportions. So that was rate, right? We'll finish that topic. Let me go back. So we're going into pr proportions and direct proportions, which is what I started. I I actually do, and I think you guys will actually love it. Now that we're going fully in-depth now, because we have time, we're going to go in-depth and understand everything about it. So we're going to say proportion and direct proportions. Let's go here. Put it in the center. There we go. The Cena Force hasn't joined yet. I still don't see them. All right, that's probably what happened. All right, let's focus now. Let's go back here. So we're going to say now proportions and direct proportions. Let me give you a moment to just head up while I take register. All right. 
So we're making great speeds, but again, I'd like for the persons to participate. So now what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna give you the opportunity now to get um, involved in class. So what I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna give you an example of a question and I want at least three persons to answer the questions with me, right? So we're gonna say, given the table below, answer the questions. All right, let me draw the table. Table. The first part of the table says mass in kilograms. All right, and those mass are one, two. Yeah, let me just put it: one comma two comma three comma four comma five. All right. Next part of the table. I'm gonna say next row is weight in new tons this is now 9.8 comma 19.6 let me zoom in here we go 19.6 comma 29.4 comma 39.2 comma and 49.0 Right, so each value should match up, for example, to the corresponding value. So let me just space it out a little bit so you can see what I'm referring to. So let me take a little bit of skill for me to get this lined up, but I think I can do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna, there we go. Excellent. All right, everyone understands now? So there we go. Excellent. So the numbers should match up just like this. One, two, one, two. All right, good. Understand? So, those are, so that's the table you should write off. All right, and now we're gonna go into the question. All right? The first thing we're going to do is that find the, the mass and the weight of each object. Okay? So what this essentially means, let me do the first one, is that if the mass of the object is 1 and the weight is 9.8, then that would not give you the actual mass. Because say, for example, you weigh, for example, 90 kilograms. When, you, when you're on Earth, because of the pull of the Earth, you weigh more than 98. So you'd actually be 90 times 9.8, and that would be your actual mass, because gravity pulls on you. So that's, this is what happens here. So whatever you weigh, you're going to multiply that by 9.8 to see what your actual mass is. Does that make sense? So in other words, let me do the first one. The first one has a mass of 1. We're going to multiply that by 9.8. And that will tell us now that this object actually have a weight of 9.8. So the second one, we're going to say 2 times 9.8. That would give you the actual weight of this mass of being... 2 times 9.8 is 19.6. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, I, I wasn't seeing the um the, the zoom, my bad. So now <clears throat> what I want you to do, you're gonna the first person to quickly finish this table and tell me the answers, right? Gets one point. Let me just check the zoom. As soon as you finish, raise your hand. So you're gonna calculate each weight for the mass. Okay, but how are we supposed to do it? Like, hey, I'm too big. I want to go. All right, because here's what I was saying, basically. You're going to multiply 9.8 by each of these five values, and you should get this second row. So quickly do that for me. 
That's what we call a proportion. So multiply 9.8 by 2. Then multiply it by 3, by 4, and by 5. And then I'll explain what is happening there. So you start to multiply one number by all of them? Yeah. So, so you should have a table looking at this. Where you say 1 times 9.8 is equal to 9.8. 2 times 9.8 is equal to such and such. 3 times 9.8. 9.8 is equal to, you should tell me, 4 times 9.8 is equal to, you should tell me, and 5 times 9.8 is equal to, and you should tell me. The reason why I showed you the answers first is because I want you to see now how proportion is, right? Because we use one value, 9.8 in all of them, and we get different values due to the proportion of the mass, right? So that's what we're gonna work out right now. So when you finish that, let's let me know. Let's continue. Okay, All right. So write something now. <clears throat> the formula that was used here is someone I want now to take me through the steps, right? What were we finding? I said that you weigh a mass, and because you're on Earth by 9.8, you get multiplied, and that gives you your weight. So in other words, we are looking for how much you actually weigh. We call that weight. Does that make sense? So we're saying weight is equal to something. Right now, I want someone to raise their hand and tell me now what would be the two things multiplying and explain to me why you think. First, that. But I raise my hand before PM. All right, Khalil first. All right, what? Well, so so yeah, so weight would be equal to two things multiplying. It would be. Sir. Well, Sir, it would be. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to the question. It says, find the mass and the weight. If we're saying weight is equal to something, it has to include mass as well. So we're saying weight is equal to mass, right? And now I want someone to raise their hand and tell me what did we input on the mass to find the value. First person to raise their hand, let me check. All right, pale. Mass times 9. Exactly, exactly. Thank you, pale. So now this is what we call a constant value. This 9.8, we call a constant value. Let's write that. Because it never changes no matter the mass we, we had, right? If we had two, we still had 9.8. If we had three and so forth. So the 9.8 is called a constant value, right? So in other words, the weight of an object is equal to the mass of that object multiplied by a constant value. And you can test it out, right? You won't, for example, um, be able to do it now, but, he, but here's what you would do. You would go on the scale, see how much you weigh, Right? And then what would you do now to see your mass? First person to raise your hand. Because the mass is essentially how much you truly weigh without gravity. Pale? You multiply it by 9.8. Wait, 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 wait. Let me go back. So remember, when you go on the scale, that's your weight. How would we find our mass? So the weight is equal to something, and we want to find our mass. If we multiplied mass times 9.8 to get weight, what could we do now? To, oh, my bad.
All right, let's continue quickly. So I was just going to say that if we have the weight, because we go on the scale and we're measuring our weight, right? Whenever you go on the scale, you actually measure weight because you already have the 9.8 on you. You're being multiplied by gravity already. So to find your true mass, how much your body actually weighs, I mean, how, how much you actually have in terms of density, your mass, right? You would essentially remove that 9.8. So what would we do to remove this 9.8 from the mass? Oh, my bad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Here's what I was saying. So when you go on this scale, you can ask the parents. When you go on the scale, you are measuring your weight. The reason why we say you're measuring your weight is because this 9.8 is always on you. It's constant. But you can find the true mass of your body, how much your bones actually um, um, measure by finding your mass. So you can do this after class. You're going to go on your weight scale, look how much you weigh, and you're going to do an operation to that weight. What could we do to get this 9.8 off of our mass and just find our true weight? I mean, find our true mass. Let me see the hands. Anyone? Pale? Okay, Pale. I think you would divide. Exactly. Exactly. Because we would divide by 9.8 here and divide by 9.8 here. And that would now give us our mass, how much our body actually measures without gravity. So we'd say our mass is equal to now weight divided by 9.8. Let me give you an example. Let's say I weigh 400 pounds, right? <laughs> Even though that's not true. Let's say I weigh 400 pounds. If I divide that by 9.8, that would tell me how much my, my body actually weighs without gravity. So I can, I can, for example, know how much my bones measure, how much my blood content adds to my weight and so forth. So let's just look at it. So that would give us, my bad, calculator, 400 divided by 9.8. That would give us 40 kilograms, All right? So that's a little fun exercise. You can do it after class and you'll see how much you wait outside of that. All right, good. But let's continue now. So what I want you to understand now, after we got this table and we said that essentially you're multiplying by 9.8 every single time, though 9.8 is called a constant value and something interesting happened to that constant value. Let's look at it. So here we go, 9.8. All right, look at this for me. <clears throat> We're gonna say now, there is a ratio that occurs based on this fact. Let's look at what exactly we mean by a ratio. If I say, first of all, that I had um, two multiplying, right? if I had 9.8, 9.8 to 19.6. Let's go back to the table. Right? Uh, the answer be one to two, sir. All right. Excellent. But how did you get that? Okay. Explain. Uh, I started to divide them, sir. All right, good. So that means that the ratio here, as Khalil said, would be one to two. And if you don't understand what, I, what he means by that, essentially, he divided it or he looked on the table and saw that the mass was one here. To 19.6, which was 2. So the ratio to, to the first mass to the second would be 1 to 2. Right? That's what we mean by proportion. Let's go to the second one. What if now we had 39.2, right, to 49.0? What would be that ratio? First person, raise your hand. 4 to 5. 4 to 5, correct. 4 to 5. Good job. So what I want you to do now, you're going to finish this table, insert the rest of the ratios. All right? So I'm going to say ratio 3, ratio 4, and ratio 4. Finish the table. And then now check the portal now for your homework as it relates to what I would like for you to practice to prepare for next class. Sounds good?
Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, I see your hand, Khalil. You have a question? It says, uh, cut which page is the book? Right. So if you go on page 119. Right. Uh, we actually need to talk about that because we can't use the volume one because it doesn't have the info. It doesn't have the information that it's recommended by the school for volume two, which is this book. Right. So what I'll have to do, Khalil, I have to take some pictures of this book just to substitute for the volume one because some of the notes that you need is in this book. So a personal price can be found on page. And page 18 in the volume one, but for a direct proportion, yeah, it's not it can be found on page 80 to 81. So, right, right. okay, good. So, we're gonna continue the next class on this topic, but just revise now, and you'll see the homework on the portal. It's gonna be on page 119. It says, A painting is 60, 60 centimeters by 40 centimeters 45 centimeters if the painting is magnified by so that its length is 90 find its width but i'll put it on the portal all right so i'll see you guys next class all right take care yes, sir.